Okay, good morning. And uh, maybe have some the student cannot join in. So the monitor, you can just uh, remind of uh, your members. Okay. Okay, now the time is uh, begin. So maybe we don't want to uh, wait the for more time for the uh, classmates or for your students cannot join in. And uh, we are just uh, continue to discussing about our course. And our course is called Discrete Mathematics and its application. So the first we will just uh, uh, introduce myself and then we will just introduce this course and then we also to say something about the course requirement. Okay, it's my name, and uh, uh, here is my the Chinese name. Okay, so you can call me the Professor Zhang, or you can call me directly in Zhou. No problem, just uh, you know you. And my WeChat to the uh, the name, you can uh, just add me and from this uh, WeChat group. And, uh, my email, and then sometimes you can send email to me. And if you have any question, you can ask me during our, the online class or after online class or any other time with our appointment, you can just uh, con contact me. Or sometimes you can just uh, contact my assistant and his WeChat. Uh, the, his name and also you can find the, uh, the WeChat group and sometimes you can also find the, the Jintao group also you can find the, like the assistance okay but sometimes maybe we cannot to uh, give you the response directly but uh, you should give me some the, or ask some the time to respond to okay. and uh, now we just uh, introduce the descriptive mathematics is our course. So, uh, what means that is to the mathematics? So, mathematics maybe you will find it is a uh, it is a descript or sometimes you will find it is a very uh, uh, boring. Maybe sometimes you will find it is a very complex, uh, difficult to learn for the mathematics. But in fact, it is a descript. So you will find discrete mathematics is sometimes also called the computer mathematics. So it is the computer mathematics that means it is a basic mathematics for the computing or for the computer. It is just connected to the discrete the structures. So the discrete structure is the very important for our computer major. So in the future, or maybe the next call, next semester, you will learn the other or many other the course such as the, the, the database or sometimes maybe the data structure is also related to the discrete structures. So this discrete structures may be just include the logic set functions, relations and algorithm analysis and also we will just also introduce some the graph, the theory, it is also related to, to your uh, computer the, uh, field in the future. Okay. And here is sometimes maybe the text the, uh, book and uh, maybe you just related to how the PPT, the version of PPT, uh, sometimes uh, this uh, electronic file maybe it's okay but sometimes you can find some the online the textbook maybe okay and uh, here are just the uh, the cause of the objectives that means we don't want you to uh, some the boring the theory the mathematics and the proof and the theory we are just to know that how the work for the computer how the computer work that's the best on the mathematics the theory okay or um, so we're just using this is how the using application we're just 
how to using our the mathematical reasoning to solve our the real question by the computer. This is our the objective or objectives. Okay. And we also to know about the combination analysis and descriptive structure is very important for our computer major. And sometimes uh, uh, we also know the average thinking. So maybe you will learn uh, something, the basic the idea that means software is equal to its structure and or plus the algorithm. So algorithm is very important. So for our course, we will also to discussing about something algorithm thinking or algorithm the basic idea. Okay, and um, we will more time or sometimes we will pay much attention to the application and the model for our this course. Okay. The, the next, so we just uh, discuss about our course requirement. The first is the uh, just the sign in or arriving or sign in just the online online time. The uh, maybe uh, you are just uh, to have enough of the sign in the this uh, uh, the course. Okay, and we also have some the uh, final report or sometimes we have the experiment report so you will also to submit in the dean talk group so sometimes we are just to uh, publish the our the dean talk group about the uh, this uh, assignment or experiment or final report okay so this is a pretty much attention you cannot just the, the copy or cheating uh here is just about the, uh, the ratio that means we have just the three parts. The first is assignment and also the sign in attendance. And this is maybe the 30%. And also we have the four, the four, the experiment, the object, maybe just the 30%. So you should, uh, when you finish the experiment online, then you should submit the experiment report. And then it's maybe the, the final report because we are just the online if just the face to face maybe you have the final examination okay but now maybe we're just the final report so uh, final report may be that uh, in the last the two weeks we are just to give you the final report the requirement okay so uh, this is our the grading for the maybe have the basic the three parts First is assignment and sign-in, and the third, and the second is the experiment report, and the third and the last is the final report, okay. So uh, this is the introduction about this, of course. So have any question for this introduction? Can you hear me? Yes, sir. I see no question. Oh, okay. So, if no question, now we are just uh, continue to this. Now, we first we just uh, see something in the video about this uh, online, and I will also publish this uh, videos uh, uh, website for the intro group. Okay. Uh, we first to see the, the video. Sir. Hello. Hello. Sir. Sir. Hello? Yeah, I can hear no, you. Sir. I have Hello. a question. The final yeah. exam is the uh, online or uh, yeah, the online. Uh, online exam. Yeah. Uh maybe okay. we just not the uh just the different from the Best to face uh, the examination. Maybe it is just the big report or just the final report. It is maybe the open question and related to our the course. So you can just uh, 
do yourself about to connect some of the material and finally you can write in some of the idea of reality to see the open question. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. Any more questions? Actually, can I ask you something? Yeah. So is there any possibility to take us back in campus next month? Uh, sorry, I cannot. Yeah, clearly, I just uh, listen some the next month, yes? No, no, I mean, is there any possibility to take us back in our campus in the next few months or end of this semester? Uh, sorry. And the other one to just repeat his question, so I cannot catch him. Uh, or you can just repeat to me and uh, clearly, sorry. <laughs> You, and in other words, you can just uh, to uh, write down your question on the our the Dinka group or this uh, uh, maybe this uh, the, the, this uh, Dinka meeting also can to show your uh, just the text. You can't. You can't hear me or something. Sorry. What's your question? You can just uh, repeat again. Is there any possibility to take us back in campus in next few months? Uh, uh, I think Laoshi don't know about this. Uh, you can ask your major. Uh, you just wonder about the as unless you can continue i'm oh, sorry <laughs> so you, you can just write down your page and maybe i can understand well sorry <laughs> i cannot catch you for your voice maybe uh it is a difference okay about that mm -hmm. question you have to ask me to sunny not lush You have write down your question uh, in your inter group or which group? To Amra, I'm ready to help you. Please write down your question. The Chasey, I can use the Chester group. To Chester Kulamadel Jake Kahinita got a hobby, she took the Rekan Amra Boshavo, eat a company and now we first just continue to listen about the video and then if you just write down your question on the Dinka group, I will answer your question and in the brief time, okay. <clears throat> okay, now just in the video. And uh, first, we just to show you about these uh, videos uh, website.
clear statement. Again, that could be either true or false. I'm going to say false on that one. And I'm going to say that is proposition Q. The moon is made of cheese. Again, it is considered a proposition because it is a declarative statement that is either true or false. Same thing with Luke. I am your father. This is a declarative statement. I am your father. Either true or false. I'm going to say that one's false. And we'll say that's R. Now take a look at the difference of the statements that I've written in green. G says sit down. Sit down is a statement, but it is neither true nor false. It, I can't say true, you have sat down. That statement would have to be you sat down. That's either true or false. But sit down is just telling you what to do. And that is not a proposition. A lot of people struggle with E because they say, well, that could be true or false. And while your thinking is correct, the way that it is written right now is not a proposition. If I replace X with some value, or if I said where X equals five, well, now it's a proposition because I can say five plus one equals two is false. Or if I said where X equals one, then one plus one equals two is true. But if I don't assign a value for X and I just leave it as X, then this is not a proposition because it is not true or false. The propositions themselves are fairly straightforward. Again, we're using a lowercase letter, P, Q, R, S, etc. to represent a proposition. And then what we're going to do is we're going to end up making a compound proposition using these connectives. So I want you to think of these connectives like operators. As I would take one plus two, that's an operator. So these are just operators for propositions. And I've put them all on one page together just to have one page that you could refer back to. They're all called connectives. So we're going to go each of, through each of these in detail in the following slides, but I did want to put them all here. So let's talk about them very quickly. We have the negation. And again, this is how we would use that negation. So I would say not P. And again, I would say it as not, but that is the symbol that I would use. Conjunction is and. And again, we'll talk about each of these in detail. So obviously I would be taking P and Q. A disjunction is an or, so that would be P or Q. An implication is an if then. So this is an if P then Q. And then a biconditional, notice it has an arrow on each end here, says if and only if. So P, if and only if Q. And that means they both have to share the same truth value. So again, we're using P, Q, R, S, etc. using those lowercase letters to represent each proposition. So let's get into each of these connectives in further detail. The first connective is a negation. And again, the negation is not. And this is the symbol that we would use. So the negation of the proposition P is not P. So example, if I say P denotes the grass is green, then not P denotes it's not the case that the grass is green. Now, it's silly to write it that way, so we don't. Instead, we say the grass is not green. So let's take a look at these few examples I have here, and then I want to look at some truth tables with you to make sure that this all makes sense. So the first one says, my dog is the cutest dog, which this is a true proposition, by the way. So my dog is the cutest dog is my proposition P. If I want to write not P, then it would be my dog is not the cutest dog. So that is not P. Again, we could say it is not the case that my dog is the cutest dog, <coughs> but it's easier to write it um, the way we would normally say it in the English language. The door is not open is P. Now again, if the door is not open is P, then if I'm negating something that already seems like it's negated, 
remember in mathematics is the only place that two wrongs do make a right. So the door is not not open, which means the door is open. Again, we could say it is not the case that the door is not open, but in real life, we would just say the door is open. Last one, are we there yet? Be careful with this because this is not a proposition. It's not a declarative statement that is either true or false. And because of that, I can't negate it. So let's talk now about truth tables and how a truth table works. So if we have a truth table, essentially what we have is a row for each possibility of the truth values of our proposition. So I want you to think of this as having two parts. So this is a very, very basic truth table that we're going to do. But the left side of our truth table has all of the combinations of the truth values for our propositions. So in this case, if I just have one proposition, P, that P can either be true or it can be false. So let's say P, again, represented my dog is the cutest dog. Then I mean, group is share for the site, you know, share for the site. Then not P represents my dog. No problem is not the cutest dog. I already wrote this. So. so how does the truth table work? Well, again, on the left side, we're going to give all of the combinations. Well, so very it's easy a, uh, and on the right side, we're going to use whatever our connectives are. And so we might have several columns on each side. In this case, we just have one column on each side, but we might have several depending on how complicated our truth values or our truth table is going to get. In this case, let's look at our proposition P. And here's how a truth table works. Let's say P is true. So here I am, P is true. My dog is the cutest dog is a true statement, which means not P, my dog is not the cutest dog, would have to be false because my dog can't be the cutest dog and not the cutest dog at the same time. Let's say instead that my proposition was false. I said my dog is the cutest dog and that is an incorrect statement. Then not P, which says my dog is not the cutest dog, would have to be a true statement. So that's how a truth table works is on the left side we have all of the different combinations, on the right side we have whatever connectives we're going to use. Truth tables are going to be very important to us, so that's why I wanted to introduce them to you in this video so that you had a good foundation when we get to our next video where we're going to use them in more detail. Before I continue on to our next proposition, I just want to remind you that in this case, I only gave you one proposition. We're going to have several in fact, our very next example is a proposition where I have to, or excuse me, a, a connective that requires us to use two propositions. So if I have two propositions, I'm going to have two to the n rows, which is two square rows or four rows. And really, this is all about just how many combinations are there. Let's say I'm using P and Q. And it doesn't matter um, what the connective is in between there. So we're going to do P and Q. We're going to do P or Q. And we're going to do these in just a little bit. But just so we understand, the left side would have to have all of the values for P and all of the values for Q, all of the combinations of those two. So here's the best way to go about this. If I've got P and Q here, then P could be true and Q could be true. P could be true and Q could be false. Then it's um, also a possibility that P is false and Q is true, or P is false and Q is false. So notice 
On the left side, which has two columns, these are my combinations. Now, do your professor a favor and write them in this way. I have a lot of students who do true, true, and then false, true, and then false, false, true, false. And it, it's very hard for me to check your work when you're all willy-nilly like that. So do me a favor, keep these groups together and then these will alternate and we'll continue to work on that together. Our next connective is called a conjunction and a conjunction of propositions P and Q is denoted P with the little arrow head basically Q and it's read P and Q. So conjunction is an and. And one way to help you remember this is this kind of looks like a capital A if you added that little marking in the middle. Now, the reason that I bring this up is because our next one is going to be the arrow pointing down instead of um, pointing up. So it's good to be able to keep them straight. For conjunction to be true, both propositions must be true. So we're going to create the truth table together. But it's also important to think about the fact that P and Q represent statements. So let's say P is, um, it is raining. Q is I am home. So if I'm creating my truth table, remember there are two sides to this. And on the left side is where we just give all of the different possible truth table combinations. And since there are two, two propositions, that means it's going to be two squared or four different rows. So I'm going to, this is not going to be a row. This is just going to be where I put my values P and Q. So I need four rows. So one, two, three, four rows. And of course a column for each um, each of my propositions. So I've got P, Q, and I'm going to list all of the combinations. So P could be true with Q true, or true false, or false true, or false false. So that's all of the combinations. On the right side, is always going to be whatever it is that you are doing a connective of. So in this case, we're only doing P and Q or the conjunction of P and Q. And that's the only thing I will need on the right side of my truth table. Now, before we start filling it in, let's think about what this means. P says it's raining, Q says I'm home. For this conjunction to be true, both propositions must be true. So it must be raining and I must be home. So this says P is true, Q is true. It is raining and I am home. The only way for P and Q to be true is for both P and Q to be true. And that is the case here. True, true, so P and Q is true. For the rest of the rows, this row represents, it is raining, I am not home. So that's false because they're not both true because I'm not home. 
this row represents it is not raining, I am home. And I am home. So it's not raining and I am home, of course, would still be false because it's not raining. And this row represents it's not raining, I am not home. Again, false because they both have to be true for it to be true. So it doesn't matter if you put these propositions if meaning to the propositions. But keep in mind that that's what you'll be doing quite often is you'll be using those propositions, using those statements to write them as letters and then go from there to make the truth to you. Another connective is the disjunction. The disjunction of propositions P and Q is denoted P with the opposite facing arrow, so basically a V, um, and red P or Q. And for a disjunction to be true, either proposition must be true. So when we were talking about a conjunction, both had to be true for the conjunction to be true. For a disjunction, either proposition must be true. Again, when I create my truth table, I'm always going to start on so that's just the combination side. I haven't done it yet. On the right side is where I'm going to write whatever my um, results are. In this case, the connective is the disjunction. So I'm going to write P or Q. And again, I think of the disjunction or the or as being a cup. So if you can put anything in the cup, if either one is true, then the result is true. So if P is true and Q is true, then P or Q is true because either one of them is true. If P is true, but Q is false, P or Q is still true because P was true. Only one of them needs to be true. They can both be true, but only one of them needs to be true. If P is false, but Q is true, P or Q is still true because Q was true. So the only false value I'm going to have is where both P and Q are false because neither one is true. And for the disjunction to be true, either proposition has to be true. So uh, here, just uh, you will find this the uh, two, the symbol. And the first thing is uh, here is the uh, end. Okay. Here is the end. And this is uh, the end. That means it is just the, uh, you see the symbol and you will find this is the truth table. And from this truth table, you will find it is only the only the one T and uh, the three fourths. So that means that both P and Q just uh, uh, satisfy the truth, then the finally P and Q is the truth, otherwise is false. So that means it is a, a very strong so conjunction. It is a very the, uh, 
uh, it's the strong the condition that means that both p and q is the true are true and finally p and q is true but the uh, all it is uh, uh, different that means uh, it is uh, either one of them is uh, true is, is okay so you will find they have the three t only one false so it is uh, different for the end and here just means uh, both t and q it is a uh, false and then the finally is for otherwise is uh, true so uh, you, you should to uh, pay much attention to this uh, to the symbol for the and and all okay and maybe have, have any of the other and that is something like you get soup or salad with your entree now if i'm buying an entree that means i can get soup or i can get salad is either the main 420 is either proposition has to be true so that's my solution the ors can get a little bit tricky most of the time in mathematics we're using that inclusive or that we just talked about that's the p or q um, and that is saying for instance, the prerequisite for MA420 is either MA315 or MA335. And by that I mean you could have passed MA315, you could have passed MA335, or you could have passed both of them and you can still get into MA420. That's the inclusive or. That's the one we use most often. There's also the um connective or in english which is called xor and that is something like you get soup or salad with your entree now if i'm buying an entree that means i can get soup or i can get salad but i can't get both i mean i can i can just pay extra but i can get one or the other but i cannot get both so while we just finished talking about the inclusive or, where we said if either is true, then it's true. And that was true, 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 false. The exclusive or is only true if one is true or the other is true, but not both. So the difference here is because this one had two trues, then the exclusive or is going to return a false value because I can't have both soup and salad. I can have soup or I can have salad. And then of course, false false is not going, is still going to be false. So hopefully you can understand the difference between those. Now notice the different notation I'm going to use now. This is the XOR notation, um, which is basically just a circle with a plus sign on it. Up next, we're going to continue our study of the connectives by studying implications and by conditionals. And we're, of course, also going to look at the converse, inverse, and contrapositive of the implications. Hope you can join me. In this video, we are going to complete our study of the connectives by learning about implications, including the converse, inverse, and contrapositive of the implication. And implications are just if-then statements. And biconditionals, which are if and only if statements. So again, in our last video, we were introduced to what is a proposition and talked about the first of the connectives, which is the negation, not P, the conjunction, P and Q, 
or the disjunction, P or Q. That was all covered in video one. So here in video two, we will be talking about the implication, the if-then statements, and along with implication, there's a converse, inverse, and contrapositive, and the biconditional, which is the if and only if statement. And if you're a math nerd, if and only if you're a math nerd, you will write if and only if as IFF. Let's look at our first connective of this video, which is the implication. The implication sometimes called a conditional statement because we are saying that something is true based on the condition that something else is true. So an implication of propositions P and Q is denoted P and a one directional arrow, Q. And it's read either if P then Q or P implies Q, which of course both of those mean the same thing. Now the truth values on this one can get a little bit tricky. So I'm going to go through the truth table with you. Remember, on the left side, we're just going to do our normal P's and Q's. True, 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 false, false, true, false, false. So on the left side of my truth table, that's where I just give all of the different combinations. And again, if you are one of my students, this is the way I would like you to write that because it just makes it a lot easier for me to grade the right side of your work. Um, so this is where it can get a little bit tricky because now I'm trying to find the truth table for the implication P implies Q or if P then Q. Now, part of this is very easy. We're saying that if P is true, then we would expect Q to also be true. And if that's the case, then my truth statement is true. So here on my first row, P is true and Q is true. That is what I expect. So that's true. So looking at it in terms of, say, a scenario, if P denotes that it's a holiday and Q denotes the store is closed, and I would expect that if it is a holiday, then the store is closed, and both of those things are true, if the holiday and the store is closed, that is what I expect. It is true. For my second line, if it is a holiday, true, and the store is not closed, then that's not what I expect to have happen. That is false. So again, what I'm looking for here is if P is true, then Q must also be true in order for my implication to be true. Now, I'm going to skip over that third one for just a second and go to the fourth one. If P is false, and we're saying P denotes it's a holiday, so I'm saying it is a holiday and Q is false, where Q says the store is closed. So I'm saying if it is not a holiday, the store is not closed. That is what I would expect. That is true. The issue comes from this line right here. This truth value is actually true. And that one's a hard one to get your mind around. So this one's saying it is not a holiday and yet 
the store is closed. Now, keep in mind that this is a one directional implication. It doesn't say anything about whether or not P is true based on Q. And so if we find that P is in fact false, then basically what we're saying is our implication isn't valid. Our implication doesn't say anything about Q. So if the hypothesis P of our implication is false, then it doesn't tell us anything at all about the conclusion Q. So essentially, if your hypothesis is false, as it is in my bottom two, then the truth value of an implication, no matter what Q is, is going to be true. Okay, we have five minutes break. So now we just can see the question about uh, Uh, for this question, is uh, there any possible to take you back in China in next few months? Uh, sorry, I cannot tell how to answer. Maybe you can just ask for the teachers in the in your overseas college, and maybe in the possible you have the chance, but I cannot assure. <laughs> sorry, it just depends. That maybe sometimes. Uh, the local government, the, the, just the rules or something is okay. Okay, five minutes break.
Hello, for the question is uh, sign in, maybe uh, don't worry about it. If you just cannot sign in, you can just uh, directly send your name to the, the teacher assistant, okay? Uh, just uh, what it means? Uh, we ID. Uh, if you just want to for the reply, you can just show uh, this the uh, online website, okay? And this website, it is uh, the same. You can just talk about the is the course the video, okay? Uh, if you cannot the visit the BDBD, then you can just. Uh, with the YouTube, maybe you can just, uh, you can select. And for our channel, maybe we cannot frequently to with the YouTube, but we can just uh, with the Filipini, okay. Okay, now the teacher assistant have make a note about your name. Any question? Okay, if you have anything, you can just write down your question on the Dintel group or WeChat group. Okay, now we continue to hear about the video. Let's talk now about the converse, inverse, and contrapositive. These are just three more conditional statements, so they're still implications that we can construct using our original implication if P then Q. And essentially what, what we're going to do is we're either going to negate your propositions or switch the order or possibly both. So let's take a look. The converse of if P then Q is if Q then P. So the converse is just that we're going to switch the order. The inverse is going to be the exact statement that I had, but I'm going to negate both. So if not P, then not Q. And the contrapositive is going to be switch and negate. So the whole ball of wax, switch and negate. So let's take a look at an example because this is the type of question you get. An extra kick. The extra kick is notice I've given you a statement that is just in the or kick. It's not an if then So if then do this. So I'm saying this is an then form first so that it makes sense. And then from there, it's very easy to write the converse, inverse, and contrapositive. Training is a sufficient condition for me not going to town. So that's kind of a wonky way to say, if it is raining, Then I won't go to town. Now, why did I do that? Because I have my, my and 
And then this is a proposition. It is a statement that is either true or false. It is raining. And I will go to town. Also a proposition that is either true or false. So I'm going to call this P and I'm going to call this Q. If P, then Q. P implies Q. That is my original statement. So I haven't done any work yet. I've just gotten ready to do my work. So now let's talk about the converse, inverse, and contrapositive. The converse says, if Q, then P. So I'm going to say, if I won't go to town, or if I don't go to town, then it is raining. So all I did was switch the order. I didn't change any of the positives or negatives. So notice this is a won't go to town, so it's already sort of negative. I didn't switch that here. All I did was switch the order. So if I don't go to town, then it is not raining. The inverse means I'm keeping this exactly the same order, if P then Q, but I'm just negating each statement or each proposition. So if it is not raining, because I'm doing not P, if it is not raining, then I will go to town, because I'm negating a negative, so that makes it positive. So if it is not raining, then I will go to town. And then the contrapositive, contrapositive is if not Q, then not P. So if I go to town, so I'm negating not going to town. If I go to town, then it is not raining. Now, one thing I want to point out, and the reason I put this star right here next to contrapositive, is the contrapositive will always have the same truth value. Oops, value as if P then Q. It's the only one that for sure will have the same truth values as if P then Q. Here's a question for us to try together. And again, I chose this one specifically because I have not given you the implication written in if then form. So the implication I've given you is Professor B, that's me, Professor B is happy when you complete your homework. So a lot of students make the mistake of trying to write the converse, inverse, and contrapositive without first writing it in if-then form. And I would encourage you to not do it that way. Please write it in if-then form first so that it is very clear. Um, otherwise, it can get a little bit tricky with the language. So reading the sentence, it says, Professor B is happy when you complete your homework. That means Professor B is happy only when your homework is completed, right? So if your homework is completed, if your homework is completed, then Professor B is happy. Not only then, but that's what the implication says, is if you complete your homework, then Professor B is happy. So that is my correct implication. If P, then Q.
if you complete your homework, then Professor B is happy. Now, once you do that, then it makes it pretty easy for us to go ahead and find the converse, inverse, and contrapositive. So the converse, if Q then P, if Professor B is happy, then you completed your homework. The inverse, if not P, then not Q. If you did not complete your homework, then Professor B is not happy. So the original statement just negated. Contrapositive is switching the order and negating. Professor B is not happy. If Professor B is not happy, then you did not complete your homework. So hopefully you did well on that. Again, it all stems from being able to write your initial implication in the proper form. That brings us to the biconditional. And a biconditional is also a conditional statement like an implication, but by, of course, implies two. So this is actually just a two directional implication. And it is denoted with the double sided arrow and read P if and only if Q. What that tells us is that for the biconditional to be true, both propositions must share the same truth value. So we're going to create a truth value or a truth table just as we have in the same way that we have before. So we have P and Q. And again, the left side is just going to be all of the different possibilities. So that's true, 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 false, false, true, false, false. On the right side is where we're going to do whatever our conditional or connective statement is. And in this case, that's just going to be P if and only if Q. Now, the only way for P if and only if Q to be true is if they share the same truth value. So we can see here, we have true, true. So my biconditional is true. And here we have false, false, which means my biconditional is true. Both of those instances, the truth values for P and Q are the same. If you'll notice the other two, true, false, those are not the same. So my biconditional is false and false, true. So my biconditional is false. So we just talked about a biconditional, and we want to give you a little preview into our next video and what we're going to be doing. Our biconditional P if and only if Q can also be written as a compound proposition, and that's what we're going to be working on next is being able to make a truth table for compound propositions. So we're going to talk about basically how to construct this. But for now, I've already sort of put it together and I want to talk about um, basically how to fill it out, right? So we already know this part of it, the part on the left. That's pretty easy to us at this point. We're writing all of the different combinations of truth values that could happen we only have two propositions, so we only need two to the second um, rows, and that, of course, is four. So we have true, 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 false, false, true, false, false. Sometimes I can't talk and write at the same time. Now, to this point, we've really just kind of had two parts 
to our truth table, the left hand side, which is all of the different combinations, and then the right hand side, which was everything else. And these are going to start to get a little bit more complicated. And so now I kind of have three parts. So I lied to you before when I said there were two parts. The middle part is going to be to find all of the parts that make up the compound propositions. And then the very last part, especially when we're looking for equivalencies, and that's what this is saying, is that E, if and only if Q is equivalent to the, and again, we're looking at the and, we're looking at if P then Q and if Q then P. So we're saying that those two things are equivalent. And so that's what's going to happen now is we're actually going to have three sections to our truth table. So in the middle, I'm looking at the part